I talk about this story in my book, actually, uh, Beginning to Winning. If you haven't gotten your copy, it's available on Amazon plug. But it is a story that I tell when I was in law school. I was a first year law school student, and I actually wanted to be a prosecutor before becoming a criminal defense lawyer. And I thought, you know, I'm going to work my way up. I'll probably go into politics, become a district attorney or something like that, and then run for office. You know, that kind of traditional track. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know any better. But, uh, but that was my vision as kind of a, a naive first year law school student. So one of the things I wanted to do in order to be a good prosecutor was learn a little bit more about how the police department worked. And I uh, had never had any experience with it. I didn't know, um, you know, really any anybody in my family was never a law enforcement officer. And so I went on a ride along with a Phoenix Police Department officer, very young, uh, totally naive. And I just said, hey, I'll just like to go on a ride along and learn a little bit more about what you do. That way I can be a better prosecutor because I'll have boots on the ground experience. So we did. I went down to one of the substations here in Phoenix and we went on a uh, on a ride along. We spent a night sort of just driving around uh, writing people tickets all, all night long. And we we, we had uh, a number of, of really sort of disturbing incidents that I saw happen. People were, I think, getting taken advantage of. People were getting stopped for reasons that were, were, were sort of not not really genuine or in my in my interpretation of what I knew at that time was it didn't feel like it was a genuine re like the law didn't exist for this. The law wasn't intended to do these things that these officers were doing. But the officer that I was driving with, we made probably 10 traffic stops. He probably impounded five cars that night. Uh, multiple people were arrested. Multiple traffic tickets were handed out. And this this officer sort of had a reputation for uh, for, for being very, very aggressive. And uh, basically, after every single uh, time that we got back in his police vehicle, after he wrote a ticket or impounded a car or whatever it is he was doing, he would literally uh, actually audibly tell you how much money he thought he was generating for the city based on that arrest. So, for example, he would say, okay, driving on a suspended license ticket, right? May not sound like a big deal. In Arizona, if you get stopped for that, they impound your car. It's a class one misdemeanor, the same as a DUI. It has penalties, it has fines. And so basically what he would do is he would say, okay, this person's car just got impounded. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna have to pay $250 to get it out if they can't afford that. It's gonna be another $75 per day if they can't get it out after the 30 days. Then eventually it's going to be basically forfeited. The government's gonna take it. That car is probably worth $3,000. And so he would just have this running tally and then he would say by the time she goes to court and pleads this down, it's probably gonna be a fine of $500. And so just on and on and on. And so this guy would just create this tally and then he would, as the night went on, he was just keeping score, basically a scoreboard of how much money he was generating for the city. And it made my stomach churn. You know, it was one of those things that was kind of an eye-opening experience for a naive law school student to think this, this is what, it, it, it feels like an excuse for justice. This is what justice is. This is what the cops do.